What's up everybody, JJ here, and this is the coolest 3D printer I've ever reviewed. And it all comes down to one word, IDEX, Independent Dual Extruders. So there's two extruders here, two hot ends and nozzles, one over here, one over here, and they can move independently of each other. And I think it's one of the best ways to get dual color prints and dual color prints that seems to be the big hot ticket item now. There's so many different technologies and ways to get that done. And we'll get into all of that, both the benefits and the downsides of IDEX in this review. First, let's start off with the specs of this build volume. This thing is huge. You've got 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters tall. So you can print some massive things on this printer and it can handle it. There's a downside of that, as always, you need a large amount of space to put this. It's a, it's gonna be a big printer. The next big spec is auto bed leveling, and the probe is over here on the left hot end assembly, and that allows you to do be mesh bed leveling. Any decently priced printer nowadays should come with some sort of auto bed leveling, unless it's either an older printer or a really cheap printer, but even then nowadays, a lot of them will come with auto bed leveling. It's just makes printing so much easier. The next big spec is TMC 2208 stepper motor drivers. And I think that's another thing in a decently priced printer nowadays, it should come with at least TMC 2208s. If anything didn't come with at least TMC 2208s, it would have to be a very cheap printer for me to even consider it. The build plate here is a removable spring steel plate with this painted surface on the top of it. I haven't really seen this on other printers, but it seems to work really well, sticks very nicely. It almost sticks too well in some cases, so you don't need to smush down your first layer too hard, but it seems to work really well. It holds on well, it releases well. Another feature that you see on a lot of printers is this touch screen here, and it works better than I've seen it on some other printers. All the settings and features you can access through this touchscreen was more than I'd seen on other printers, so I was just impressed by that. You can change things like auto shutoff timers, a lot of calibration since you do have two extruders here. We'll get into the calibration later. It also gives you really nice thumbnail images of what you have sliced on your SD card. That can be really nice in case you mislabeled one thing on your SD card. That thumbnail image will appear there and let you know what you're about to start printing before you start. Another really nice feature is this built-in webcam and an ESP32 module, which allows it to connect to Wi-Fi. That way you can remotely monitor it. I've just been using Cura to monitor it. It's really nice that I can be upstairs and this can be down here printing and I can still kind of keep an eye on it. There is an app that goes with it, but I didn't feel like setting that up since for me, I really just want to be able to kind of see what's going on while I'm upstairs monitoring prints. It's not an amazing quality webcam. You're not going to be doing high quality time lapses through this, but it is good enough to see what's going on while you're in a different room. I do really like that it's built in here and kind of has a dedicated place for it to be. It doesn't get in the way at all. It just seems to work really well. Another thing to mention is how many great parts come with it. So if you did buy this, it comes with pretty much every tool you're gonna need to get going. Offset cutters, which I think are my favorite tool when it comes to 3D printing. A big bench scraper to be able to scrape off any prints. A glue stick if you need it. And a lot of spare parts. There's spare ribbon cables if these ever get damaged. Spare brushes, because those will probably wear out so it's nice to have extras. All of the standard extra end stops. SD card readers, extra thermistor, all the tools and little zip ties you might need. It's nice to see all this bundled in, especially since this isn't a budget level printer, to just go ahead and put all these little tools in there. And that way you'll just have an easier experience with this printer, knowing you have all the parts you need. It also came with two of these mini spools of filament, which is really useful because you're gonna do a lot of calibration when you get this set up and going. So it's really nice to see that they splurged and put this in there. This may be $10 of filament for the manufacturer to add this into the whole bundle here, but it really adds to the user experience to make it nice and smooth setting it all up. And the final spec to remember when thinking of all of this is that it comes in for $520. That's a great mid-level price. There's definitely more expensive printers out there, but there's definitely some more budget printers out there. So this is more the mid-range of printers and it comes with a lot of really great features. But now that we've covered the specs here, let's deep dive into what IDEX really means on a 3D printer. So there's four big settings with IDEX. First off, you can use just a standard one nozzle large print since you got such a large build volume here. The second one is duplicate. If you want two of the same things printed in a single color, you can do that if it's small enough to fit on half of the 
build. The third option is mirror mode. I find this one to be really useful in more functional prints. When you're printing, say, I don't know, a picture frame or a box, something with two halves of it, a lot of times you're gonna print mirrored edges of something, and I found it pretty useful to be able to print two different opposite sides at the same time. With both of those modes, it's like having two printers running at the same time. You'll get double the output of your 3D printer. So especially if you're batch processing a lot of things, or it seems to come up pretty often for me where I want multiples of the same thing. And so with this, I can just bang them out way faster. And the fourth print mode, and probably the big ticket item, is dual color printing. And dual color models look so cool. They look just so much better than a standard one color 3D print. I think one color 3D prints look so good, but when you're able to get two different colors in the same print, it looks just amazing. And with a little bit of tuning of the slicer, it really has started to print really well. But it wasn't without a lot of calibration that had to go into it. So the big issue here is that we've got two different nozzles and they need to be calibrated in the X, Y, and Z, or at least the printer needs to know where they are in relation to each other. So you run some test calibrations. Luckily, the SD card comes with some really good ones. First, you do a coarse tuning file, and then you do a fine tuning file to really sort of get them all aligned. And those files work pretty well for the calibration. Then you need to align these brushes on the side. These brushes will clean off the nozzle as it parks one while the other one's over here printing. Those do keep oozing to a minimum, but it's still recommended to use an ooze shield around the print. Both they use it in their pre-sliced models. And in my testing, I found the models just came out a little bit better if it did a ooze shield that kind of just primes the nozzle right at the print before it starts printing the actual model. With two extruders, you will need to think about where you're gonna put the filament, and they luckily give you two options. One is to mount it back here on the back, or you can mount it up on top. Since this is already such a tall printer, I decided to mount it on the back, make it a little longer, isn't that bad, and then normally I have it sideways on the printing table that I have it. And that's been working really well for me so far. When it comes to dual color printing, you can, of course, do the dual color models like this, or another really nice added benefit is something like this, where this could have been printed by doing a pause and then swap out the filament on a regular printer. But instead, I didn't have to do anything. It was all hands off. It just printed up on one color, then swapped to the other nozzle, then printed the rest on the way. So it makes something that's possible on a normal printer so easy and hands-free on this printer. But of course, this isn't a perfect printer and we do need to cover the cons and downsides of this printer. The biggest one for me is how long it takes to do the calibration and tuning of this printer. It's not something you just get out of the box, start slicing, start printing, easy. This one took a couple hours of solid printing before I started getting good, reliable prints out of it. I think part of that was you do need to do more calibration of the printer, but then their Cura profiles was a whole different issue. I really didn't find them as good as I found from other companies. And I still think I could find more performance once I get that dialed in. And I think a big part of why it's taken me so long to tune the Cura profile is that Cura for dual filament printers just has so many extra settings. And each setting has two different nozzles to it. It's really cool how much you can tune and calibrate to it, but it is a good bit more challenging than on a standard single nozzle, single extruder printer. Another downside is that on their website, they do have a wiki answering some questions and explaining some parts of the printer, but it's not the best laid out. And I did have to go onto their YouTube channel to find where they explain how to tighten these belts. Both of the X belts came loose out of the box, but they do have a really good video explaining how to, you just take these off and then move some of these screws over and that tightens up the belts. Another downside to this printer and something that I feel like they just should have added from the factory, but you have to print them out yourself, is a purge bucket. So every time these nozzles go over to the edge, a little bit of filament is gonna fall down. So it's almost necessary that you print out these little baskets that will catch anything that falls down. Otherwise it'll just get caught up you have all these little bits of filament everywhere, so you don't want that. You really just need to print these out. These models specifically just clip onto the sides here. And this is also a great example where mirror mode would work amazing. I printed these out on a different printer while I was running calibration on here. But this is a really good example of where in the real world, mirrored objects are really common. So these, I could have mirror mode printed in half the time. But overall, that just about wraps up this review 
Overall, a really powerful printer. There are some really cool projects I have planned for the future with this printer and with dual color printing. If you're interested, hitting that subscribe button down below to make sure you won't miss it. But that definitely doesn't mean it's a perfect printer and I probably wouldn't recommend it as a first printer for anyone. There's a lot of corks to it and there's twice as much calibration. I know if this was my first printer, I would be so confused and just sort of frustrated with it. Anyone's first 3D printer is gonna be a huge project, a lot of things to learn with it, even with the easiest printers. There's always so much to learn about this amazing hobby and the best way to get hooked is with a printer that will just print for you. This one though, I love as a second printer. So I can have a different printer that can be my go-to, printing out little upgrades or additions to this one while I'm taking the time to learn the Cura profile, learning dual color printing and 3D modeling of dual colors. There's still a lot I'm learning about perfecting this machine, but it doesn't mean I'm dead in the water if something isn't working. But this printer does have all of those things I wanted to upgrade to from my first printer. Large form factor can do some big projects here. Dual color allows you to make some really cool prints out of it. So I'm really glad I can take my time learning this one and have other printers I can fall back on for my day-to-day -day printing. But anyway, that just about wraps it all up. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. I will put links for everything in the description as well. And if you've stuck all the way through, you're one of the real fans. I wanna thank you so much. If you wanna support this channel, I have set up a Patreon or you can join my YouTube channel down below. That helps me out financially to keep this project and this channel alive. But anyway, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.